Okay, good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you all to the Daily Energy Markets podcast. It is uh, Wednesday, October the 4th. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Ami Daniel, co-founder and CEO of Windward, Peter Maguire, CEO of XM Australia, and Richard Rodolia, CEO of Matrix Global Holdings. Thanks so much, gentlemen, for joining us uh, this morning here in the UAE, at least. Thanks, Richard. Peter, to you then. Um, on that point, I wanted to ask you about, you know, we have seen obviously those treasury rate numbers being highlighted in the last 24, 48 hours. You know, we haven't seen them at those rates since 07, uh, et cetera. Fed, meanwhile, has been saying it's going to hold where it's at through like, next year, more or less. I mean, uh, you know, what, what are we seeing now? I mean, does that, does that put a bit of a dampener on where we've seen commodities and oil prices go? We're kind of turning... Um, you know, a bit more cautious again. Where, where where do you see that indication? Do you see a difference in sentiment in the last two weeks? Well, uh, good good morning and greetings from Abu Dhabi. Now, I don't necessarily. I Richard and I spoke off air before the show started, and, we, and he was saying, you know, we look back on what happened a year ago. We were on together, and in that time, you could probably nearly mirror image where we are today. And are we in for an uplift or an updraft to that one hundred five one ten sort of level? And what will that do to naturally uh, yields with the dollar. The dollar's running at 107. Commodities have been fairly heavily sold off. If you look at, and let's look at gold first, 1840 an ounce, copper's well down to 8,000 a metric tonne. There's a lot of the base metals have been crushed, but the only one that, one of the only commodities that's boomed to the upside has been energy. And that's been very evident over the last say 110 trading days, 110 days. So it's been absolutely on fire and maybe it's just taking a little bit of a breather at the moment. I'm, I'm in that camp, you know, the, the 93, 94 sort of testing on Brent. It's back to that 90, 91 sort of handle at the moment. And I, it's just having a breather. It was exhausted. And I'm thinking it's probably just building up some steam again. I'm conscious as far as yields. Where does the Fed play, you know, I, I won't be surprised if you see a rate rise in, in November, but certainly early next year from the Fed, because I don't think inflation will be contained. Naturally, if you've got these high energy prices, I'm looking at the sort of sort of numbers that you're experiencing in Japan. They're back. Put it this way, in the end, and uh, Richard was saying as far as how much it's costing in California, it's now more expensive in yen to buy a, a litre of petrol than it was in two, or gasoline than it was in 2008. But we've got crude prices running at 90 versus 150. So that's where it just shows you that US dollar has just been extraordinary over the last couple of months. Our traders are rubbing their hands with glee. Everything's being punched down, but the US dollar is just reigning supreme. OK, I mean, yesterday I was speaking to someone who was telling me it's now cheaper in California to charge your car by battery for the week than it is to, put, to pay for gasoline. Uh, so, so that's another little factoid. But Richard, just uh, Peter, just sticking with you, on, on that sort of price, oil price number, 110, you said you were talking earlier about that. I mean, OPEC won't let it get to that, will they? They Won't they be worried about demand destruction at that point and just step in again, reverse a couple of the cuts they've been doing? Will they let it get that far? Well, I don't know. We're in the hands of naturally OPEC plus. There's a JMMC meeting today. I want to see the rhetoric that comes out of that. You, you, you hear a lot. You, you listen to a lot. Just let's, let's see what the... Uh, uh, what the what the words are, and then naturally you look at sentiment, and I think that might be another reason why the market's probably backed out a little bit. They're just waiting for that announcement today to see mood. And look, I, who knows? No one can forecast, but we're still running at around about a million barrels up for next year as far as consumption versus 23. So it's overall, it's still growing, and it's just uh, differing players all willing to put their hand in the till to get, you know, more of that value or more of that, uh, you know, production to allow their own budgets to be in, you know, full capacity because everyone's under the pump globally. Peter, just back to you, let's talk a bit about gas, uh, LNG uh, in particular, and um, just give us a picture of, of the Australian uh, picture right now in terms of LNG. There's been a bit of movement there in terms of certain capacities not maybe coming to the fourth in the near future uh, and certain people have been relying on Australian <laughs> LNG looking elsewhere and just an outlook for gas prices in general for the fourth quarter uh, for Asia uh, any any worries there uh, in terms of you know winter coming well Australia um, contributes about 21 percent of global demand uh, or production and 
it's, I think Qatar's running at 20% and uh, US is 19%. So those three players make up just shy of two thirds of global production. We had some issues going back to about the 7th of September with Chevron as far as industrial uh, mm. issues and union strikes, which didn't really materialize to a big issue, Diala. And the other side of that, and that's you know now you know three and a half to four weeks away, four weeks ago, and where it's a very remote part of WA, Western Australia, the largest state in the world. It's an enormous area, and it's uh, I, I don't think we've got any issues as far as production. The uh, the issues are as far as price and how that's going to you know move forward. But will it get swept up with? You know, high energy prices. Does a rising tide lift all boats? And if we, as we've spoken, you know, if we see 110 or 120 dollar barrels of oil, I'm sure that gas prices will go up fairly strongly as well. And that's going to be, I think, good for producers, not necessarily for consumers. And what impact that has naturally to the wrecking ball of as far as US dollar against other currencies. And do we see, uh, you know, at what point demand destruction? take the market by storm or does it weather that and you're looking at you know subsidies from governments all over the world to try and uh, comfort voters and of course consumers. Peter let's go to you to close up for us and have a little bit look at the sort of outlook for the US dollar obviously running very strong right now uh, a lot of people calling that you know medium term it's going to start to weaken when is that finally going to happen? And is that just dependent on what happens with rates in the US? Obviously, that's holding it up. And also just give us a little bit of a, an outlook for other commodities. What are they doing? Gold, uh, et cetera, outlook for the fourth quarter. We see our survey uh, result there a bit tight, 50%, 56% say no. That's not going to stop the bulls. So that that bullishness continuing, according to our viewers anyway. So, Peter. Yeah, exactly right. You know, I think that as the energy prices continue to, trend higher that's going to take dollar up even further so that's going to be a powerhouse behind it it'll just be a very very strong us dollar i think certainly leading into christmas and early 24 very hard to forecast much further out than say three months but that's how we look rolling into christmas the second part of it is where does the uh, as far as fed what does policy do you've only got to see how many central bankers around the world are now starting to say that it'll have to be higher for longer. As Richard said earlier about Janet Yellen and the talk as far as inflation, um, you know, invariably they get it wrong. So let's just see where we are again, that that move to the upside. Do we see demand destruction entering that, uh, that framework across the world for higher energy prices? Maybe, maybe not. And I think that it's going to be an incredible time over the next matter of months to be from a trading perspective for that US dollar, I won't be surprised to take a 108 or 109 out. Pretty hard to, maybe a 110 by Christmas. It just seems to be, have a trajectory all of its own. And uh, that's going to be incredible what it does as far as intervention for the yen and other currencies are really starting to be felt. You know, we've probably got a 50 handle in front of us for the Aussie dollar. We're now at 63, so possibly close to 62. High 62s very, very shortly. So, yeah, it's going to be game on for currency traders and certainly for commodity and, and watch out for equities. Yeah, and also, you know, obviously uh, even more impact of higher energy prices for those consumers who are buying in different currencies. So perhaps more, more of an impact on demand there as, as time goes on. Thank you so much, Ami Daniel, Peter Maguire and Richard Rodolia for joining us uh, this morning. Yep.